Good evening. Good evening to everyone. I'm happy to be with you tonight. Bible study is another prayer day. God bless you. We are forty-five minutes for his many full blessings. I want to say at the onset we want to god bless you i see those of you who are coming on good evening to you and thank god for you we want to tonight um talk about heaven and um uh i will say that i don't hear a lot of songs written about heaven uh, nowadays. I don't, good evening, I see you, Sister Gibson, Sister Sonia, hey, hey. Sister Sonia White makes, um, what's the stuff you make? Oh Lord, I just went blank. She makes, um, I see you Sister Baskin, God bless you. She makes, um, Sea moss, sea moss. If you want or need some sea moss, hook her up, check her out. She's on Facebook. Inbox her, Sonia White. She will be happy to share her sea moss with you. God bless you for coming in tonight. Uh, hi, Mama. I see you, honey. We we. Hey, I see Pastor April. I see you. God bless you. Um. We, we don't hear a lot about heaven these days, and I don't know why. Uh, when I was growing up, we used to sing songs about heaven, and we used to um, uh, think about heaven, preach about heaven, hear about heaven, but for some odd reason, and I don't know why, I don't know what is the reason, uh, we don't really hear a lot about heaven. Good evening. I see you, Deb. We don't hear a lot about heaven. Uh, I have heard preachers ridicule other preachers because they didn't preach about hell. I haven't really heard anyone talk about the fact that we don't preach about heaven. I think that we have gotten so accustomed to this earth, to this world, until we have lost sight of the fact that you and I, as believers, every blood-washed person, every Christian, every person, no matter whether they're in the United States of America or whether they're in the Congo on the continent of Africa, every person that names the name of Jesus Christ and is blood washed has a dual citizenship. All right? I forgot to type my scripture in. Okay, so let me give it to you. 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5 verses 1 and 2. I see you, Sister Gregory. God bless you. Thinking about you today and praying for you as well as the rest of the saints at VTOP. I'm going to read it. Verses 1 and 2. And since I learned it from the King James, I'm going to read it from the King James. I see you. I see you, Brother Tony. God bless you. It says, and I'm in King James, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Verse 2, for in this, in this body he's talking about, we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. I'm going to stop right there. In this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from 
heaven. And I trust that you will read the rest of the chapter. Uh, my title tonight is something more to look forward to. Something more. God bless you, Kayla. Something more to look forward to. Um, I came with some good news as a reminder that, yes, God bless you, Tyrone. Good to see you. I, I want to remind the people of God that this ain't it. That this world, that this earthly journey is not it. The believer has much more, so much more to look forward to. And that is heaven. Now, it all depends on what you believe about heaven. And I, last week I had one point. This week I got, I've got two points. It all depends upon what you believe and how you think about heaven, uh, uh, how you will live and how you will, how you will uh, as we say in church, govern yourself. What am I saying? Uh, I, I, I thought about a dear friend of mine who, who uh, oh goodness, years ago went on to be with the Lord, but we went to the same church and I, God bless you to the Hughleys. We went to the same church and any song about heaven, any kind of song, um, it was set him off. Pastor's on and he, and he knows. And um, uh, when I say set him off, he would go into a full buck shout dance. And uh, may God rest his soul. I, I chuckle, I laugh. He would look over there at me and he would get in that aisle because he always sat on the end at First Church and he would dance and shout. And um, um, I, I, I kind of marveled at that. And um, um, I think he had a little bit of insight and he understood that we have something more to look forward to. What am I saying? I, I think that the believers nowadays, the saints, the church, um, I think that we have settled for just the fact, Jason, Lord Jesus, my mama's on and my oldest son is on. Well, bless God, hallelujah. Um, um, we have settled uh, for the fact, yes, I'm talking about, I'm talking about Uncle David. Uh, we have settled that this earth is it. Well, people of God, this earth ain't it. Somebody ought to shout right there. If we were just relegated a man to the Jackson Five, Erica and Isaac. I hope you all saw the text that I sent you before the Bible study. So please bear with me, Isaac. Amen. You'll understand. <clears throat> uh, uh, I, I think that we have lost sight on the fact that you and I, every believer, has a dual citizenship. We have a permanent citizenship and we have a temporary citizenship. Let's not get it twisted. This earth, this planet that we're on right now is our temporary citizenship as a believer. Hallelujah. Our permanent citizenship is in heaven. It's on high. Oh, yes, it is. And, and, and I don't know why we don't hear very much about heaven these days. I don't know why people have stopped writing songs about heaven or if they've, if they've written songs about heaven, they're not very popular. I, I can't really answer all of those questions, but this is what I know. The Bible is sure and is complete and is factual in telling us that we as believers, as Christians, will go to our eternal home called heaven. If it's up, amen. If it's to the side, amen. 
I don't know. All I know is heaven is where the Lord is. Glory to God. And that's where we're on our way to. And as we are journey, journeying down here, we have to think about the fact that this is not our home. Thank God it's not. Now, yes, we're, 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 we're supposed to, God bless you, Sister Linda, all the way from the Sunshine State. Um, uh, we're supposed to prepare. We're supposed to educate ourselves down here. Um, we're supposed to do the things that are, are, are necessary to uh, live a godly and a peaceful life. But we cannot put all of our eggs in earth's basket. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Didn't you just hear me read the scripture? Uh, we're encased in this flesh and in this flesh, we have issues, somebody type issues. But when we are, when we are changed, please understand, we ain't gonna have any issues. I don't wanna get ahead of myself. I don't wanna get ahead of myself because I'm starting to get excited. I'm starting to get that David Kinney uh, anointing. When, when we are changed, when this mortal is changed and it's gonna be changed for the believer, we won't have the issues. We have something more than just this to look forward to. I see you, Michelle. We have to be mindful that our permanent citizenship is in heaven. Good evening. God bless you, Gabe. Our permanent place, our place that we will land, where we will spend eternity. God bless you. I see you, Tamara. Uh, 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 is in heaven. It ain't here. It is not here. Now, now I don't know about you, but that makes me happy. That makes me happy that one day this mortal is going to put on immortality. It makes me happy. God bless you, Brother Joseph Warren. It makes me happy to know that when Jesus was preparing to leave, he said, in my father's house are many mansions. So, so let's look at that for a minute. In God's great big old house, it's many mansions. Now, I don't know how many square feet your house is down here or your apartment or wherever, wherever you live. Uh, uh, but, but most of us don't live in a mansion. And if we do, we don't live in a mansion that's been prepared by Jesus. He said, I go away to prepare a place for you. Thank you, Jesus. And if I go, I'm going to come again. And what? Receive you unto myself that where I am, you will be also. All right. And so, and so I, I, I don't know if I'll ever live in a mansion. I haven't uh, ever lived in a mansion, but, but I certainly have not lived yet in a mansion prepared by the Lord himself in the father's house. <laughs> oh God. All right. All right. And so, and so, yes, yes, I have a decent house down here. Yes, it, it's all right. Um, but it ain't like heaven. It ain't like heaven. It is not like heaven. And so we, we don't want to lose sight. We don't want to forget that this is not it. Are you glad this is not it? I'm so glad this is not it. I don't know what to do. I could play my own shouting music and dance to the fact that this ain't it. If this was it, we would have a right and a reason to be miserable every day as believers. But people of God, this is not it. Paul talks about it, telling the church at Corinth that there is more than this. There is something more to look forward to. Too many believers have forgotten about the fact that this isn't it. We are on a journey to leave this place. We will leave these mundane shores. Oh, yes, we will all of us. Now, yes, Paul says, for we shall not all sleep, 
but we all shall be changed. Oh yes, you 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 read it over in in Thessalonians. We shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. We don't even really talk about the second coming of Christ that much, not that much. But people of God, the second coming is an event that is going to happen. I see you, God bless you. I see you, Sharon. Um, and so we don't want to lose sight. We don't want to give up. We don't want to lose hope. And let me tell you something. There's there's all kind of theories about heaven, and 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 you know everybody has a, a belief about heaven. And 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 I've tried to envision what heaven must be like. I've tried to 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 think about and to imagine what it must be like where there is no sin there. Oh my God. There's no sickness. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. There, uh, uh, the old people, the old church says every day is Sunday where it's always howdy, howdy, and never goodbye. What they're saying is, I, I've come to understand that in this earth, we say goodbye to people. And we know that uh, so well this year. Many, 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 many people have, have just gone on to be with the Lord this year. God bless you, Will. God bless you. Brother Will has... has uh, kind of been off the scene a little bit because he's a newlywed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But uh, praise God that he's on tonight. Um, yes, we don't. You're absolutely right, Brother Joseph Warren. We don't want to lose sight. Listen, there is a prepared place for a prepared people. Now, what you think about heaven will affect two things. Two points. Number one, it will affect the way you walk. What am I saying? The way you walk, walk it out for those, for those hustlers and line dancers, the way you walk it out, walk your journey out. It will affect the way you walk. It will affect. Now, we cannot earn heaven. And I, I too, I too like the, the song, you know, and this is not shade. Don't get me wrong. I too like the song, Lord, I'm running, Lord, I'm running, Lord, I'm running, trying to make a hundred. You all know that song. 99 and a half won't do. Um, but Jesus already made a hundred for us. Okay. Heaven is not a works base. It is a byproduct of a saved person's life. Amen. I see you, Charnay. It, 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 it is a result of a yielded life. All right. It is not, if you go to the word of God, salvation is a G-I-F-T. Well, in the salvation package is heaven. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the salvation package. So, so it will affect the way you walk it out, the way you live the, your day to day, knowing, knowing I can't put all my eggs in earth's basket because I'm only here temporarily. I'm not here forever. And thank God I'm not. Because if I can tell you this, um, we need to stop as believers we need to stop being surprised that the world is getting worse and worse. The world is going to get worse and worse. <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The problem is the church is supposed to be getting better and better. Just let that sink in for a minute. We're supposed to be getting lighter and saltier as the world gets worse and worse. We've got it backwards. We've got it twisted. The church, okay, 
I really don't want to go down this road, but I'm on, I'm on the path. So I might as well, I might as well go. The church is not getting better and better as we're supposed to be. We right now, we, we're, we're going through a downward, a downward spiral. We are kind of, kind of getting worse and worse. Okay. All right. Uh, some of you all are kind of slow coming. Uh, so just last night, I heard of a pastor who was counseling somebody, counseling a couple just last night, somewhere in these United States, not in the Detroit Metroplex, but somewhere in these United States. And um, uh, for some reason, he thought it would be a good idea to start a relationship with the husband. not the wife, the husband. I said the church is supposed to be getting better and better. We are the salt. We are the light. We are the the the, the savor that we we but we have we have we have allowed our ways to be more like the world. All right? So so Oh, bless you, bless you. So, so we're always taken aback when we hear the craziness that goes on in the church. And we should be. We should not be taken aback when we hear the craziness that goes on in the world. All right, let me hasten to a close because 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 my time is going to go and, and I, I got to get to my points. So it it should affect the way affect a affect the way we walk, the way in which we live our day to day, not on Sundays, because everybody can be saved and live holy for the few hours that we spend in church on Sundays. Hallelujah. Everybody. Everybody. But really after we leave and and I know we're not meeting. I know we're not meeting, so we're zooming and we're we're uh Microsoft teaming and we're we we got all kinds of different uh, platforms and mediums. After we hear the word Okay, when we run into an obstacle, when uh, uh, somebody flips us the bird, um, I was on the freeway the other day. Uh, it was it was midday, and uh, I was on a freeway where even though the speed limit is seventy five, I'm sorry, seventy. Uh, if you're not driving eighty ish you're subject to get run over. And that would be the 275. And people in the Detroit area know that if you, as well as the 696, I happen to be on the 275. And a, a gentleman who looked to be a Christian, he was in a white Lincoln, uh, uh, I wasn't going fast enough for him. And I was doing 80, but I wasn't going fast enough for him. He looked like somebody from the church, looked like. All right. He kind of had the preacher ish look and he flipped me the bird. And uh, my car has quite a few horses. And 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 my first mind said, catch up with him and flip him the bird back. And I said out loud, let it go. Let it go. It doesn't matter. And, 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 and I was so thankful that I followed the Holy Ghost. I, I, I know, I know you all always follow the Holy Ghost and I praise God for you, but I was so thankful that I, <laughs> I see you, Tammy, that I followed the Holy Ghost because I could have caught him. I could have. And, 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 <laughs> and. I could have, I don't normally, yes, I was going 80. And to me, I was doing good, but to him, I wasn't. And he looked like somebody that was saved. And so I just prayed and I said, Lord, uh, uh, bless him. That's what I'll say, Lord bless him and let it go. 
God bless you, Angela. And so I, I, I said, okay, this is the way we live. This is practical living. This ain't on Facebook Live preaching and teaching the word of God. I ain't from Compton. It's not that far from Compton, but I'm not from Compton. I'm from South Central Los Angeles and proud of it. Um, um, but but I'm not before the saints right now. It's just me in this car with the Lord. Amen. And you all would never have known that story. I didn't even tell my husband that story. But I want the way I live to be reflective of where my permanent citizenship is. Okay. All right. All right. So that's point number one. Our permanent citizenship should affect the way we walk, the way we walk it out. No, point number two, and I don't have the two points, our, our permanent citizenship should affect the way we witness, the way we walk and the way we witness. I don't even know if the saints at large are witnessing. Are we? I don't know. I don't think we do a lot of witnessing. I don't think we do a lot of sharing of our faith. I don't think we do a lot of telling people about the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ the, these days, during this time, this pandemic, even before the pandemic. I wonder, I wonder how many of us actually share our faith or do we just leave it to the preachers and teachers at our churches? Do we? Do you know that we all, as believers, have a responsibility and a command to share our faith? Did you know that? All of us, without exception, every believer, every other movement, every other group, religious group, they share their faith. Mm -hmm. Cults share their faith. Hmm. But we don't. Why? Why? Why don't we? See, see, understanding that we are we are bound or or as the or as the, the church of God him says, we are heaven bound. Um we need to take as many folks with us as we can. Do we really have the love of the Lord if we don't witness to the unchurched and unbelievers? Do we really have the love of the Lord? My grandmother used to say, there's a lot of people that are just hell scared. My daddy's mother. There's a lot of people who are just hell scared. They're not really saved. And this is not in the Bible, but they're scared to go to hell. <laughs> she had another word that she would add on the end of that statement, but I won't, I won't use that word uh, uh, because it's not politically correct. But uh, uh, really and truly, the fact that we are on our way to heaven, we ought to want to take as many people as we possibly can. And in order to do that, we need to share our faith. God has given us a prime opportunity during this time, during this pandemic. People are down. People are anxious. People are depressed. People are feeling some kind of way. People are out of sorts. People need to hear the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Do you really think that this pandemic caught God off guard? It did not. He is 
still in control. His word is still true. You and I are still experiencing the promises of God. He still has his right hand of power on our lives. He still is orchestrating and ordering the steps of our lives. And people need to know that God is still in control. I know the debate comes on tonight at nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time, but God is still in control. And I don't care who wins in November, God is still in control and people need to hear it. We have more divide, we have more isms and schisms with the, with the racial inequality and the racial and civil unrest. This is the time, this is a prime time to preach, to teach, to share the the word of God to share that the Lord is our shepherd, to share that it is the goodness of God that leads to repentance, to share that this place, this world, this earth is not our home. It is a prime time. You know, when you think about people like Andre Crouch, Andre Crouch talked about, Andre Crouch was an evangelist. He was a soul winner. Oh, yes, he was. He wrote songs about heaven. He wrote songs about the rapture. He, he, he spoke about it in his concerts. There were so many people that were one to Jesus Christ because of his music about the Lord, his music about heaven, his music about the second coming. So many people, where, where, where is that? When, when, we, when we appreciate the fact that we have a permanent citizenship in heaven, we ought to wanna take as many people as we possibly can with us. Too many believers have put too much stock in earth in this life. And don't get me wrong. Yes, you should prepare. You should you should you should prepare for retirement and 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 yes, you should educate yourself and yes, you should save money and yes, the, you know, you should do all the things that we're told to do to do okay down here. But in our mind, in our spirit, we know that this ain't it. We have, as the believer, something more to look forward to. Because Jesus said so. That's how we know. Who have you told about heaven? Who have you witnessed to about heaven? heaven. You ought to have at least a list of folks. I'm not talking about people who are churched. I'm talking about the unchurched. I don't know exactly how everything is going to look uh, 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 once we're able, once we are back in our buildings, and once we I, I, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to look, but I know this, the gospel doesn't change and heaven is a part of the good news of Jesus Christ. The fact that this world is not our home. It is not. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad about that people of God. I thank God this world is not our home. I thank God that there's something more to look forward to. I thank God that we are on our way to where Jesus is. Oh, yes, I do. And I don't know if I'll be raptured or if I'll be caught up, if I will have fallen asleep. God bless you. God bless you, Ron. I, I, I don't know. I don't know which one. I don't know if the Lord is coming back in my lifetime. I don't know. And I don't pretend to be an end times person. But I tell you this, however the drip drops, whichever way it goes, I'm happy for the fact that I have a permanent citizenship and it's in heaven. 
Oh, yes, I am. I'm happy. I'm glad. I'm thankful. I'm grateful. And guess what? No man, no human being had anything to do with it. Glory to God. It's all God. It's all God. The gospel doesn't change. And included in the gospel is the fact that you and I have another home. In fact, we have a permanent home, eternal in the heavens. Glory to God. Now, this scripture <clears throat> I'm going to share with you is so often misquoted. Revelation 21 verse 21. And I don't, I don't, re God bless you, Jackie. I see you. I don't normally uh, 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 teach and preach from Revelation. And that's because I'm not versed in end time. And I don't feel uh, that that's my lane. Amen. All right. But this scripture is not metaphoric. Revelation 21, 21. It says, I'm King, I'm in King James. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Talking about heaven. Glory to God. Every several gate was of pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold. As it were transparent glass. Oh, Lord. Normally, when people uh, allude to this scripture, refer to this scripture, normally the saints say the streets are made with gold. That's normally, that's not what the scripture said. Revelation 21, 21 says the streets up there. Whoo, glory. Hallelujah. The streets up there are pure gold. They're, they're transparent gold. Can you envision? They ain't made with gold. They are gold. Hallelujah. We already know it's 12 gates to the city. Thank you, Jesus. I'm getting excited talking about heaven, talking about uh, uh, the place where we will spend eternity, talking about the place where God is, where the Father is where Jesus is, talking about the place where there's always howdy howdy and never goodbye, talking about the place where there is no sickness, where there is no sorrow, where there is no sin, talking about the place where Jesus has prepared for you and I, talking about the place where we will, we will drink from the fountain that never runs dry. Glory to God. We will be around the banquet table talking about the place where we'll see the people of old, the Bible characters that we have read about and studied, talking about the place where we will see those who have gone on before. Glory to God. Talking about the place, most of all, where Jesus is, where our Savior is. That's what I'm talking. I'm talking about heaven. Now, you know, whether you believe, whatever you believe about heaven, please understand that ain't going to be, I know that's not the best English, ain't going to be no sin there. None. N-O-N-E. How do I know? Because there's no flesh there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I said we're going to be changed. Remember, God is spirit. Remember, Every, every, God bless you, Sister Lucille, every body will be changed to go to our permanent home. Every body. The sickness that we deal with down here, I've been dealing with sickness. I, I, I was telling uh, Sister Lori Woodmore, I, 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 and I told somebody else, I have never been this sickly. Never, never, never. It gets on my nerves. I hate it. The most I have ever had was, well, I had pneumonia. Um, I didn't even know I had pneumonia. Unbelievable. But nevertheless, I've never had anything drastic. And I, I guess I've been blessed, thank God. But, but I don't have to deal with none of that in a changed body in my permanent home. I don't have to deal with any of the maladies, any of the physical ailments. I don't have to deal with sin. I don't have to deal with my own shortcomings. I don't have to deal with any kind of sin whatsoever or whatsoever when I have my changed body. 
why wouldn't we share this with people? Why wouldn't we tell them, glory to God, there is a place where, where and Jesse Dixon said it, um, he said it so beautifully, some of you all will remember the chorus of this song, uh, I'm going where the wicked shall cease from troubling and the weary shall be at rest and all of the saints of the ages will sit at his feet and be blessed. Think about it. This is not your permanent destination. You and I have something more. Please remember, we have more than just this world to look forward to. I encourage you, people of God, to walk it out. We don't earn heaven. Heaven is a byproduct of what Jesus did. We don't earn it. It's a done deal. It's never uh, uh, by works, thank God, because the Lord takes people to heaven that are paraplegic and quadriplegic, people who can't work, amen. The Lord takes people to heaven who, who are born uh, with a learning disability, who don't have all their mental faculties. God bless you, Jazz, I see you. The, the Lord takes people to heaven who are not in their right mind, who, who don't have a peace of mind. So it's not by works, it's God's doing. He did it, glory to God. He fixed it so, it's a level playing field. All we have to do is accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That's all we have to do. And I know different denominations have added things to it, but no, Romans 10, 9 and 10 is still true. I know different de denominations want you to do it their way. I, I, I get it. I've been in different, God bless you, Billy. Um, um, I've been in churches where, you know, you got to go the way they say, or, or it's not quite right. Uh, okay, but the Bible is still true. You and I do not merit it. We don't do anything to earn or to deserve it. That's right, Sister Gibson. It is all God. He fixed it so. It's a level playing field. Before you and I ever knew that there was a God, Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I'd have told you. I go to what? Prepare a place for you. I see you, sister-in-law, Sherelle. And where, and where I go, you will be also. So if it wasn't a heaven, Jesus would have told us. He didn't tell us it wasn't a heaven. In fact, he reinforced the fact that there is a heaven and you and I are on our way there and we will have a changed body. So why not take as many folks with us as we possibly can? Do you know, even in this same passage in 2 Corinthians 5, do you know we all are gonna have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account of the deeds done in our bodies? Do you think we're gonna be standing before God and he never asked any of us, what did you do to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ? What did you do to tell the lost, the dying, the hurting, the set aside about Jesus Christ? My time is almost gone. There is a place somewhere beyond the skies where you and I will end up, our permanent address is heaven. I don't know if there'll be numbers as we know them there. I don't know who all is even going to go. I don't know if, 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 uh, if, if everything that we everything that we experience down here you know people say people say uh i'm a, i'm uh, i'm gonna tell god about it and 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 i don't have a desire to do that 
I don't have a desire to tell God about it. You know what I have a desire to do when I get to heaven? I have a desire to see my savior, the one who died for me, the one who kept me while I was in my temporary journey, my temporary residence, my, 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 uh, sojourn down here. I, 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 I just want to see him. I just want to see his face. I, 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 I just want to, I, I don't even have to touch him. I just want to see him. I just want to tell him, thank you. I want to thank you for dying for me. Thank you for, for shedding your blood for me. I want to celebrate him up there and never get tired. Yeah, heaven, heaven, it's the God thing. You and I have far more than this earth to look forward to. Please know that we also have a responsibility to take some folks with us to tell people about the glorious, great gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't know what you're going through, but remember, you have something more to look forward to. I want to thank you for being on tonight. I want to thank you for coming on week after week. Share this. It will be news to some people and good news to others. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer. I love you, each one of you, and I thank you. I thank you for allowing me to come into your homes and share a few scriptures with you. Until next time, the love of the Lord be with you and the peace of God that passes all understanding to guard and keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Amen.